friends we have been seeing about megalithic iron age trade centers and trade routes a very important route running from the port of musiris in the west coast through the palgad pass to the east coast on which about 30 important megalithic sites were found and a few of them around the locations of coimbatore pollachi salem and e road kodumanal near e road tandikudi in the kodaikanal hills and porundal in the palani hills were some of the very important trade centers on these ancient routes all these megalithic sites have yielded enormous amounts of objects made of iron copper gold and a few bronzes many of them taken to various museums around the world and what is most interesting is that these objects reveal the prevalence of a highly sophisticated and modern society way back from those prehistoric times iron objects in mahurjari in maharashtra thadakanahalli in karnataka and palayanur in tamil nadu yielded 98% purity attesting to the advanced level of smithery in those times while gold ornaments from mahurjari revealed a large mixture of silver indicating that they could have belonged to lesser affluent people those of the ornaments excavated from aripa in kerala were 100% pure points out archaeologist selva kumar bronzes were not found in abundance in indian prehistory as was found in the other ancient cultures of the world and for a long time scholars ascribed the skilled example of bronze finds from various megalithic peninsular sites to having been imported from the tin rich regions of southeast asia the alloying material of tin was imported together with the technology behind the bronzes dr sarada srinivasan the noted archaeo metallurgist who studies on the nadaraja bronzes we have seen in detail in previous episodes i'm leaving the relevant links here has done extensive study of the bronzes that were excavated from the nilgiri megaliths and cans and the adichanallur burial urns all of which were dated to the early part of the 1st millennium bce she has done extensive research and has established that sophisticated bronze working practices existed through the entire south india in her paper titled megalithic height in bronzes and peninsular india's living prehistory she points out that tin being a very scarce material in the indian subcontinent tin being the alloying element with copper to create bronze that was the reason behind the very few bronzes that were excavated from megalithic sites dr sarada shows how the specialized height in bronze vessels ranked among the earliest and most finely wrought examples in the world bronze metallurgy at that time was far more advanced than was known earlier and she cites the example of a bronze vessel excavated from adichanallur that is now lying in the government museum at egmore chennai the rim thickness or rather thinness of a vessel was less than 0.2 mm and she explains the technology behind it while generally bronze is made out of alloying 88% of copper with about 12% of tin these bronzes found in the south indian megalithic sites were height in bronzes that had 80% copper and 20% tin giving it a high sheen and the author explains how the microstructures of these ancient height in bronzes indicated a higher degree of hot forging and elongation the metal smiths who created the south indian megalithic bronzes had a great mastery of how to exploit the quasi superplastic properties of height in bronze fabricated by hammering out the alloy at 600 degree centigrade to view a fine collection of elongated flute shaped and carinated bronze vessels excavated from the nilgiri cans one has to go to the british museum in london where she took special permission to analyze these vessels dr sarada's ethno archaeological and archaeo metallurgical studies helped established the continuation of this technology right from the iron age burial sites dated to around 1000 bce to the medieval period that is between 
400 and 800 CE up to the Pallava times. And more interestingly, she traced the survival of these heightened bronzes in the 1990s to Kerala, where she saw metalsmiths hammering out the alloy at very high temperatures by hand and creating mostly ritualistic vessels, the tonal quality being perfect for cymbals and chimes. And very interestingly, in Tamil country, these continued well into medieval Chola period as well. And how do we know this? By a Suthiram from a very rare old Tamil literary work known as Kanakadiharam by one Kurukayur Kari Nayanar that goes, Yetade Sembil, Irendade Yemidil, Tiptamai Vengalamam. Sendurki, Itamudan, Vored, Sembil or Mundru Tutamidil, Pararia Pitalayam. This Suthiram captures the 8 is to 2 ratio in which copper and tin were alloyed in traditional Tamil country. At Porundal in Parani Hills, that is situated right behind the chieftain Begans Aviur, Porundal itself located on a very important trade route that connected the Pandian capital of Madurai to the Chera port of Musiri. Excavations done by Professor Dr. K. Rajan of the University of Pondicherry and his team led to the discovery of innumerable artifacts, one of which was a four-legged jar that contained around two kilograms of paddy. Now, we saw in the Marudam episode of how paddy was a late entrant into Tamil country. These grains were sent twice to the Beta Analytic Lab in the United States for carbon dating and they came out with a date of 490 BCE. But what is more interesting is the fact that the jar that contained the paddy had Tamil Brahmi inscriptions and prior to this dating, it was largely believed that the earliest Brahmi inscriptions in the Indian subcontinent belong to that of Emperor Ashoka's period dated to the 3rd century BCE. So this discovery at Porundal has challenged that very notion. A peacock painted on the four-legged jar resembled the peacocks painted in the terracotta jars of the Harappan civilization. Remember, we saw how peacock was seen as a carrier of the souls of the dead as explained by Asko Parpola. Porindal has been dubbed Pasi Mede because of the thousands of beads that were discovered in the sites made out of glass and semi-precious stones. While the glass beads were manufactured in Porindal itself, the semi-precious beads had been brought in from the regions of Vidarbha, another very important Iron Age site located in northeastern Maharashtra, yet another proof of the internal trade that was happening from very early historic times. Microbeads measuring just 1.4 millimeter with holes drilled inside to string them together, attested to the advanced level of craftsmanship and the staggering number of beads attested to the fashion sense of a people who lived all those 2,500 years ago. In the Sangam literary work, Madurai Kanji, there is a beautiful poem that captures the large spread prevalence of trade in the Tamil country of merchants who were virtuous in their trade practices and who lived in beautiful mansions that looked like small and large hills strung together. Araneri Pireyadu Artin Volihi Kurumbal Kuruvin Kundru Kandanna Parundu Irindu Uhakkum Palman Nal Il goes the song and these merchants who traded in a lot of goods that were imported from foreign countries also traded in precious stones and pearls and gold palveru pandamodu un malindu kavini malayavum nilathavum neeravum piravum palveru tiru mani muttamodu ponkondu sirandhiyetta panniyam pagarnarum goes the song well there are several megalithic Iron Age sites that have been continuously explored in the Tamil country during various times. At Sengalur village in Kulatur Taluk of Pudukote district, the A site did extensive excavations in the year 2010 and unearthed many rare artifacts belonging to the megalithic Iron Age dated to around 2500 years ago. Hundreds of glass beads, beads made of semi-precious stones including carnelian and topaz and even rare gold foils were discovered along with terracotta beads, fragmented bowls and pottery shirts with graffiti. Copper objects such as ring stands, bowls, lids and other decorative pieces were found in plenty 
and such copper objects are very rare to find in megalithic sites pointed out dr dayaran of asi he pointed out to more than 500 archaeological sites around the region which had a lot of stone circles using laterite boulders or granite boulders stone circles with tan packing cyst burials of different types within the stone circles including pit burials and urn burials with or without capstones the rectangular structure found here amidst megalithic monuments is very unique and not to be found anywhere else in south india except as a solitary example at chittanavasal another early iron age burial site belonging to the black and red ware period discovered in 2015 at a place called Badamala Kunda along the Krishnagiri Andhra border discovered by a geo archaeologist from the Chandrashekhar Saraswati Vishwa Mahavidyalaya in Kanjipuram Dr Ramakrishna Pisipati the megalithic site with cyst burials was found with a lot of black and red ware human bones all dated to over 2500 years ago the cysts were found with iron objects of rudimentary form including axes chisels conical shaped urns bowls plates and lids and the black and red ware also bore graffiti a few stab stones that were part of parallelo pipeds that is three dimensional parallelogram shaped tombs were also discovered one of the very recently excavated archaeological sites which has created a lot of buzz in the field because of its close proximity to adichanallur is that of sivakalai this iron age site dated to a little earlier than adichanallur at around 1000 bce was a chance discovery made by a native son of the soil tirumanikam a history teacher working in sri vaigundam who during one of his routine field trips with his school children undertook excavation systematically and recovered a lot of iron objects and pottery sheds and looking at their similarities with those excavated from adichanallur he intimated the authorities and asi took up excavations there which are continuously going on in phases ancient burial urns some with skeletal remains indicating secondary burials containing besides iron copper bronze and gold artifacts have been unearthed what has excited archaeologists most is that this is a new site and even alexander ray who had enlisted 33 sites around adichanallur had not mentioned sivakalai spread over 2000 acres and linked by a parambal which is a raised mound made of sand and stones running all the way from sivakalai to adichanallur which is just around 20 kilometers away lying on the northern banks of the tamarabarni of course the river having changed its course since then systematic excavation has thrown up a habitational site just 500 meters away from sivakalai at a place known as vallaban pillai tirad a primary burial with a full skeleton had been recovered in july 2021 by the site excavation director mr prabhakaran as of now the skeletal remains as well as the artifacts have been sent to various institutions for scientific analysis and dating talking of dating of skeletons the adichanallur urn burials threw up a lot of skeletal evidence which held the interest of international scholars and researchers for over two centuries in the process revealing the existence of a fascinating truly cosmopolitan settlement the first of its kind in the indian subcontinent about which we will continue in the next episode vanakkam